The Knicks fell to the Timberwolves 121 to 112 in their second preseason game. And while that is unfortunate, there were a couple of bright spots for the New York Knicks to look at, especially RJ Barrett, who looked dominant. 23 points and 26 minutes. We're going to break down his performance and what worked for him. We're also going to look at some things for the New York Knicks that we should start to worry about, especially Quentin Grimes on offense because he continues to struggle. We're going to break down all of this and so much more today. Let's get started. RJ Barrett looked dominant in the loss against the Timberwolves. Now, obviously, you don't want to lose if you're the New York Knicks, whether it's preseason or regular season, you always want to get the victory. However, if you don't get the victory, you at least want to see some of your players go off and do some incredible things. And RJ Barrett definitely was one of the players for the New York Knicks that went off. Even though that the New York Knicks lost this game 121 to 112, RJ Barrett in 26 minutes had 23 points, two rebounds, two assists, and he was 9 of 12 from the free throw line. He did struggle a little bit with his shot, going 6 for 15, and shooting 2 of 8 from 3. And as we see with the quarter breakdown here, the Timberwolves basically outscored the Knicks 29 to 24 in the second quarter, and 37 to 28 in the fourth quarter, where they basically ran away with the game. Now the Knicks did their best to keep the game close, and some quarters they did better than others, but I think I speak for a lot of Knicks fans who watched that game. That first quarter they played with the starters against the Timberwolves starters. I thought the New York Knicks looked absolutely impressive. RJ Barrett and Jalen Brunson were the clear number one and number two for the New York Knicks. I love to see that. Julius Randle kept passing, kept that pass first mentality. You had to love that. But not only that, we saw Jalen Brunson play a little bit more, 14 minutes I believe. And he looked like he was ready to play basketball today, right now. He still looks efficient. He still looks dominant. But his footwork, oh my goodness. That footwork that Jalen Brunson possesses. And what I was seeing against the Timberwolves, in my opinion, it was one of the best things to come out of the game yesterday. Because the Timberwolves, for all the things you want to say... They like to put defenders on the New York Knicks. They have great players in Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns, and Anthony Edwards. But it didn't matter because against the New York Knicks starters, the starters were really getting anything that they want. Jalen Brunson getting to the line. RJ Barrett being aggressive, using his strength, getting to the line. Even though he was going in the same direction that I knew he was going to go to. And a lot of defenses knew he was going to go in that direction. That's my real only knock against R.J. Barrett. However, even though that was the case, he still used his strength to create space and take that contact and finish. And because of that, he looked incredible yesterday. He played to his strengths. He was aggressive and he knew that's exactly what could get it done against the Timberwolves. He knew what the defense gave him. Even on Carl Anthony Towns, he took it on him, took contact, finished with the and one. I don't know about you guys, but I felt extremely proud, extremely happy. This is exactly what I wanted to see RJ Barrett do. Now, he still settled for the three a little bit too much. Two for eight from three. That's not great. If you're going to do that, shoot three three three-pointers. Don't shoot eight of them. Shoot only three of them. And if you make two out of three, nobody's going to say anything. But if you take eight and only make two, that is pretty bad. I don't want to see a lot of R.J. Barrett three-pointers. You have to be wide open if you're R.J. Barrett to shoot the three. If that's not the case, go to your strengths, young man. Drive to the basket. Drive to the rim. Take contact. Get the and one. Finish if you can. And let's go, R.J. Because that's what you want to see. Jalen Brunson, amazing like I said. Footwork is lethal. And you know what? I got to say it as well, too. Jericho Sims, when he plays the center position for the New York Knicks, looks absolutely incredible. I don't know if you guys took notice of this, but I did. Look at this dunk he did right here. Jericho Sims nearly jumped out of the gym. And I think I can speak for everybody when I say we're all Isaiah Roby in this moment. Do you see his face? Do you see what he's looking at? 
when Jericho Sims is going up that high and dunking that ferociously. It was incredible, folks. But let's go ahead and break down the stats for the game and see what the New York Knicks did well and what they need some work on in terms of team stats. If we look here, the Knicks shot 48% from the field to the Wolves 51%. From three, the Knicks allowed the Wolves to shoot 48 threes and they made 20 of them. Conversely, the Knicks shot 35 of them and only made 13 of them for a whopping 37% to the Timberwolves 42%. From the free throw line, the Knicks were absolutely the better team. They went to the line 30 times, making 23 of them for 77%. The Wolves only going there half as much, making 11 of them at 73%. Turnovers were about the same. Assists, the Wolves dominated 38 to 22. The rebound battle was a little bit even. Blocks, a little bit even. Steals, the New York Knicks were thieves on the night, 13 to 6. And the Timberwolves were absolutely fouling way more than the New York Knicks. Fouling 25 times to the New York Knicks 19. A lot of those fouls coming in the first quarter because the New York Knicks were not only making a lot of things happen, but they were also playing so well together that they were taking the ball away from the Timberwolves during their offensive schemes, running the floor, and taking contact to get the and one because that's where they were getting a lot of the fouls. So a lot of those fouls that the Timberwolves made came in the first quarter against the starters. We have to take note of that. And that first quarter for me was the best basketball that I saw the New York Knicks play because the starters were clicking. They were playing together. It wasn't only about the Julius Randle show. Julius Randle was not playing heavy ISO. We saw RJ Barrett cutting under the basket with a nice, sweet Isaiah Hartenstein dime. We also saw RJ Barrett playing to his strengths. We saw Quentin Grimes playing to his strengths and finally driving to the basket with the starters on the floor. And for me, that was his best play for the game. He didn't get up a lot of shots and he didn't have a lot of great plays during the game. But I can say with confidence, him driving to the basket was great. I want to see that more from Quentin Grimes. And absolutely, I think a lot of New York Knicks fans wanted to see that too. But I also want to talk about a highlight of the game and another player who doesn't get enough respect and isn't talked about as much as he should be. And that man is Mitchell Robinson. He did an absolutely incredible block against Carl Anthony Towns. And if you look, I zoomed in on Quentin Grimes and Anthony Edwards' face. Their faces in this moment when Mitchell Robinson basically comes out of nowhere with the clean block against Carl Anthony Towns. It's exactly how I was looking, and I guarantee it's exactly how most New York Knicks fans in attendance felt when Mitchell Robinson did that. You could feel it. It was incredible. And in my opinion, in one block, he showcased why the New York Knicks absolutely do not need Cat. Cat, very good player. Extremely good three-point shooter for his size. All of that stuff is true. But this right here shows you why the New York Knicks do not need to give up significant assets to trade for somebody like Cat who's going to get paid like a superstar but is not a superstar at all. Thank you, Mitchell Robinson, for making the point clear. We don't need Cat. I don't want Cat. I don't care how much the New York Knicks are interested or monitoring Cat. I don't care how good of friends Julius Randle and Carl Anthony Towns look like before the game. I don't care about any of it. In my opinion, Cat is not needed on this New York Knicks team. He doesn't move the needle enough. Mitchell Robinson explained why just now. And I'm very, very happy that we saw that block. Kudos to Mitchell Robinson. It was absolutely incredible. Quentin Grimes struggles with his offense again against the Timberwolves. Now, this is a little bit of an alarming trend for me because coming into this preseason and even coming into the season, Quentin Grimes is supposed to be one of the Knicks' best three-point shooters and one of the better players for the Knicks on offense. If he's not giving you that, it's a little bit of an issue for me. And we saw Quentin Grimes, at least on defense against the Timberwolves, look very, very good. 
I'm not worried about Quentin Grimes on the defensive end. I think I can speak with a little bit of clarity and confidence to say that Grimes on the defensive end is always going to be good, always going to be locked in, and always going to be one of the better defenders for the New York Knicks. We saw him showcase that a little bit against the Timberwolves yesterday. So I have no questions on that end. But offensively, he had maybe one good three-point shooter. He had one good drive to the basket with the starters on the court, which I thought was a statement and I thought was impressive. For me, those are some very good spots for Quentin Grimes, and I want to point those out. However, other than the things I just told you Quentin Grimes did, everything else he gave you on offense looked pretty bad. He looked out of rhythm or the shots were hitting the rim, not even close to going in. I wasn't a fan of it at all and I didn't like it. I don't know why he stopped being aggressive after being aggressive worked for him. If driving to the basket was something that was working for you and you were doing it with the starters, why did you stop doing it, especially if your shot wasn't falling? Because everybody can tell you, especially as a shooter, if you're going to drive to the basket and you see the ball go in, That gives you a lot of confidence and it helps you feel better about your shot. But if you keep on shooting and missing and shooting and missing, then it's up to you as the player to drive to the basket and see the ball go in. Because sometimes that's enough. That's all it takes to help the other side of your shooting game come alive. And I think that's exactly what Quentin Grimes need to do. In my opinion, I was looking for Quentin Grimes to step up and show me what he can do in this preseason game with the New York Knicks. He didn't really do that in the first game, so I was expecting that in the second game. And I feel a little bit let down with his style of play and what he gave me. I have to be honest with that. But the good news for Quentin Grimes is it's preseason. We haven't started the regular season yet. That's October 25th against the Celtics. He has a little bit of time to still ramp up get that game together, and hopefully when the regular season starts, we see a more aggressive and efficient Quentin Grimes because the New York Knicks are going to need that if they want to be considered contenders in this Eastern Conference. But what about you guys? What did you like from yesterday's game? Did you like RJ Barrett? Did you not like Quentin Grimes? Let me know in the comments below because honestly, guys, I would love to hear from you. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like what you saw, go ahead and smash that like button. Leave a comment below. And of course, guys, please subscribe to the channel. Until next time, Nick fans. Peace.